about what goes in a kit. It's really important that when you go to help somebody in your workplace with an accident, that you have the right items to help them. Code of Practice is really helpful with that because it's got guidelines that make it easy to figure it out. So we're gonna talk about two specific parts of advice from the Code of Practice. The first one is basic contents. If you look in section 3.1, it says a list of injuries that the first aid kit should provide equipment for. Items that deal with a variety of common injuries, such as sprains and strains, minor burns, eye injuries, shock, and that kind of thing. When we're talking about first aid equipment, I often hear in workplaces, oh, if something happens, I'll just call the ambulance, which is great. Of course you would do that. But I like to point out that it's called a first aid kit because until the ambulance gets there, you need to be able to help that person. For example, if there's a burn and you call the ambulance, that could take half an hour to get there. You don't have any kind of burn gel or burn kit to help them. In that time, that person could get major scarrings. It's very important to have the right equipment. So why do you need to know all about this? You could go buy a cheap kit from a $2 shop, but if you do that, it's not going to have the medical supplies that you need. So if we just think back to that example of Fred, if he's bleeding, you're going to need a, a few gauze swabs to um, mop up the bleeding and to clean the, the side of the wound. You're going to need um, saline to also to irrigate and clean that wound. And you're probably going to need some good bandages um, to wrap around and stop that bleeding. All of those things you're probably not going to get a lot of, if any, in a little cheap kit. So how do you know what a good kit is? Code of Practice is really helpful there as well. In Appendix E of the code, it actually suggests contents for first aid kits and shows you what items your kits should include. At Accidental, our workplace first aid kits, they comply to the code and they do cover all the basic types of injuries that could happen in a workplace. So the second thing you need to really consider is the risks in your workplace. Um, so here's an example. Imagine you work in a company that deals with chemicals. So that's a major risk. You've got uh, chemicals that could splash up into your eyes on a daily basis. If you were having to deal with that and you went to your first aid kit, you'd splash it into your eyes. Would you prefer to find something like just like this, a little 20 mil saline? Or would it be better if you could go to an eye wash station and pull off one of these? 100 mil eye wash with an eye bath on the end of it. So it makes a major difference in how you could help treat an injury. So here's another example. Imagine that you work out in a rural setting. Um, you've got a work vehicle and you're going all around the countryside. The risk there definitely could be a snake bite. If you had a snake bite, what would you prefer to find in your first aid kit? Would, do you think that a five centimeter conforming bandage would help? Or would you prefer to find a good quality snake bite kit with instructions on what to do, pictures of the five most common snakes, and also three 10 centimeter heavy crepe bandages. It is, it's actually a life or death situation. And final example I'd really like to point out is, say you did work in an industry where there was a major risk of burns. Imagine if you went to your first aid kit and all you could find is this, a little tiny sachet of burn, burn cream. Or would you prefer to find this? A burns kit with all the necessary items, the instructions on what to do, 50 grams of burn gel. It's really a major difference in um, helping. So Appendix D in the code um, is really helpful in this kind of area because it gives an example of a risk assessment. Of course, here at Accidental, when we come out to your site, um, we'll do a free assessment of your risk too and make suggestion. So to recap, the two main things you need to think about with the first aid kit, do you have the required equip equipment suggested in the code of practice so that it's compliant? And also, does that equipment suit the risks in your industry? If you have these two things right, then when you do have an emergency, you'll be able to deal with it, no worries.